Thanks for your time, Sonny. Um, the polls are looking good at the moment for, for Labour. There's been a recent boost. Yeah. What does Labour's mayoral candidate have to do to win the May election? Well, let me challenge your first point. I'm not sure if the polls that look, uh, go, uh, look that good, and I'll tell you why, because I think there's two things we forget. Firstly, that campaign hasn't properly started yet, so Boris hasn't come into the fray, said this is what I'm going to do, this is why you should elect me and stuff like that, and that will obviously change some of the polls towards him, because once people start hearing from him, they will say, oh, okay, actually, I don't mind Boris, I don't have a problem with him. And when it comes to an election, it always happens that the incumbent, the polls narrow towards the incumbent, closer to the election, and it happened for Labour in 2010 as well. For the last six months, the polls steadily moved towards Labour rather than the other way. Um, so that means it's important to get the press on side. What does Ken need to do to get the evening standard, if not to back him, not to go for the throne? I think there's two things he needs to do. One is outline some big ideas. So he has to say, this is why you're voting for me. And it's not just for law affairs. It's got to be something big and bold, which says, hey, I'm a guy who's still got ideas and energy. And I have got stuff to tell you about why this is a great city and why I'll be the, the right mayor for this great city. So it's got to be something somewhat inspirational. It's got to be something big. So it says, oh, it's, it's not the same guy that we checked out four years ago and he's now kind of tired and mm -hmm. you know all the rest of that so he, he's going to project some form of energy and that's going to come from big interesting bold ideas so, so that's one, one. Of the, so one of those flagship policies is the fairs and yes. there has been hoo-ha among the uh, in the London Assembly yeah because the Tories and the Lib Dems are saying that the numbers don't stack up yeah at the end of the day does it without sounding too cynical about it does it matter if the the accountants agree or not uh, not that much, to a certain extent, because all Ken has to do is to be strong on his uh, willingness to try and reduce fares as much as possible. So mm -hmm. if people feel that this is a guy who feels, uh, who feels in touch with their concerns about rising fares, who feels he is in touch with their issues, that living standards are getting, uh, getting squeezed, then they will vote for him, you know. So, so to a certain extent, he's going to talk on. But obviously, he's going to deliver. So he's going to show how he's going to do that. And people will just say, well, if he can't do it in the first term, he might do it in the second term. Mm -hmm. But at least he's got that willingness to do that. So there is that, and I do think that it's not entirely necessary. The sums have got to somehow add up. But there's got to be enough. Uh, it. He's going to be able to, he doesn't have to make the accountants happy, basically. He's mm -hmm. going to make the public feel at ease the fact that you know, he's, he's going to do that sooner or later. So I rudely up interrupted you earlier. You said there were two things. Yeah. I didn't let you say the same so he thing. can't just talk about fairs. So he's going to have one policy or a few policies which are big ideas. So he, you know, so that shows that he's still got some energy. And the other thing is he's going to deal with his negatives. So he's going to show that he's a changed man from last time and all those people who A, voted out, came out to vote against him, the Tory voters in the outer suburbs, who came out strongly for Boris in the way that they did not come out for Tory voters in the past, uh, sorry, Tory candidates in the past, he's going to say to them, actually, I'm not, a, I'm not the nasty guy you thought I was mm -hmm. and I have changed and I've recognised that um, I've made some mistakes. So, you know, they, so they feel that actually if I don't go out and vote, it's not going to be the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Whereas four years ago, they actually came out because they thought this guy is now really getting on my nerves and I want to get him out. So talking about the Tory voters, yes. I mean, what, are, what about Boris's weaknesses? I mean, the Labour latest campaign ad is portraying Boris as a cartoon character who's stealing fares. Yeah. My concern with that was, on the one hand, the stealing fares thing probably plays well. But actually, the cartoon character is one of the reasons why some people vote for Boris. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Although, you can get away with it early on. You can say to you know your voters early on that you're a cartoon character and you're you're a nice guy and all the rest of it. But after four years, people will say, well, yeah, he's a great cartoon character, but has he actually done anything for London? Has he actually listened to my concerns? And so, mm -hmm. to a certain extent, you can't carry that off forever. Mm -hmm. um, and you could argue that portraying him as a cartoon character as a guy who's um, who's fluffy and nice but actually in the end takes away your money and does not listen to your concerns mm -hmm. is probably the best way to define Boris 
But it's quite different from four years ago, isn't it? Because the way that the left really portrayed Boris last time yeah. was he was going to be the evil exactly. mayor, he was going to be the yeah. racist, the sexist. None of that really happened. In fact, exactly. if anything, he's Boris been has the gone out of his way. Yeah, exactly. Boris has actually gone out of his way to deal with those negatives. And that's what I mean when you say that you've got to deal with your negatives. And so Boris's negatives were that this was this nasty guy who was not going to understand multicultural London. And he actively went out of his way to go to mosques and gurdwaras and all these places and say, hey, guys, I, I, I actually do care about the fact that this is a multicultural city. And I think Ken is missing that trick. And he's, to a certain extent, too proud to say, hey, I made some mistakes. You know, Maybe I paid people too much. Maybe uh, I wasted money. Maybe everything wasn't, uh, you know, and maybe I shouldn't have opened offices in Colombia, uh, sorry, uh, Venezuela, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I accept that was a mistake and I'm going to be a changed man this time and actually that would do go some way to sort some people so actually okay maybe Ken has changed and I don't feel so bad about voting for him now or I don't feel so bad about staying at home on election day but if, if they still feel strongly enough that actually this guy should not be back in they will come out and vote and some Labour voters will not vote for him so to a certain extent he's picked the low hanging fruit but now he has to step out of his comfort zone and go further and say, no, actually, you guys were right. I was out of touch four years ago, and I have changed since then. Thanks for your time. No worries. Thank you. Cheers.